Good day to all. I am Buddhi Vila Singha. Effects of water implant decisions on the efficiency of container terminals is the research topic that I worked on. Dr. Nilas Pereira is my research supervisor. First, I will explain our research problem and objectives that were derived based on our literature review and the background study. Then we will be moving to our methodology, analysis, discussion and conclusion parts. We can identify two main planning areas as land side and key side in seaport container terminals. Key operation in key side, yard and gate operation in land side can be identified as separate planning functions. Birth planner, vessel planner, controller, yard planner, gate operator can be identified as critical human characters in this planning system. Our literature review revealed that only 20% out of considered papers focused on integrated planning function. The same trend was highlighted in one of the most recent re review study done by Kesley and Ellie in 2020, saying they found this trend as 15%. The significant point is, even in that small focus, all the planning functions were not, not considered together. Most of the studies focused on scheduling problem with another function and those studies were highlighted as integrated studies. The point that I wanted to emphasize was the limited focus in integrated planning function. After evaluating all the studies that were considered under the literature review, we found three main research gaps as limited understanding of integrated planning perspective, uncertainty in crane breakdowns, and planner's role. We found that planning operations can connect these research gaps. Then we developed our research objectives to identify the significance of all train plan decisions, uncertainty in train breakdowns, and the human factor in all train plan decisions. We developed four research questions to conduct the study. The first one is to understand the relationship between all train plan decisions and their terminal efficiency. The second one is to identify the behavior of planning functions one over another. The third one is to understand the impact of train breakdowns. And the final one is to understand the human factor in planning operations. After defining our research problem, we are coming to the methodology part. Most of these studies were conducted under an operations research context focusing on solving one particular problem. Since our focus was something different and we wanted to capture the whole planning system, we selected system dynamics as our methodology. It has the needed characteristics such as cyclical behavior, loop integration and feedback system thinking. In the problem articulation stage, we discussed alterations in the plan as the problem and uncertainties in the operation was the elementary reason. We analyzed the process through planning manuals and expert views and identified key variables in the process. Loading and discharging were the most prioritized operation over the receiving and delivery operations since minimizing the vessel turnaround time was the common objective. This is the reason to select QTR interface as the scope of our research study as well. According to the Professor Sturman, the time horizon should be capable of explaining the identified problem. Therefore, we observed the real operation by collecting planned MOOC counts hourly basis. It was conducted for both the key and yard areas. The data collection was conducted at one of the leading container terminals in a leading hub port. Actual MOOC counts at each hour were collected through the terminal operating system since those were recorded. Those data points were collected based on the vessel and the yard blocks. This was conducted for three shifts that include 12 hours each. More than 30,000 MOOC counts were collected. QC and YC breakdown data points were collected through the terminal operating system. When we checked with the whole operation end of each shift, we identified that MAP was balanced and it was always lesser than their hourly values. This is the problem that we identified as a dynamic problem. Let's consider the expected birth productivity is 100 for each hour and consider 2 hours. In the first hour, we received only 95 moves. In the second hour, we received 105 moves. That means both hours have the same MAP value. However, the end of the time period, the manager can realize that they have achieved the target. But still, they have a contribution to the system. Assuming changed values alter the system, this should be evaluated. 
After carefully evaluating the initial data as quantitative inputs and the experts' interviews and the planner manuals as qualitative inputs, the causal loop diagram was created. It explains how each variable influences one over another, creating loops within that. This diagram includes 50 variables which represent 79 causal links which are explained through 12 causal loops. When it comes to the stock and flow diagram, we should find stocks and rates. It is generated to a one rate and it is reduced to another rate. Mathematically, this can be represented through an integral problem as it has been displayed in the equations. We identified the revenue moves as the main stock of the system. At the same time, we identified expected and actual productivities are the two rates that change the X stock. We used synthesis tool in Vensim and changed the inputs and observed the behaviors. First, we changed the expected bird productivity levels at other birds and collected the output. Then, we did the same process for different train breakdown levels as well. Identifying causal loops as balancing and reinforcing based on the behavior is critical according to Professor Sturman, who is an expert in system dynamics at MIT. We identify six balancing loops and six reinforcing loops. Remaining moves from the previous hour influence the operation in this hour. To balance the impact, planners need to make alterations. It is calculated as the alteration within the considered birth and it might create a positive change or a negative change. <coughs> when it creates a positive change, it creates a balancing loop that balances the system without increasing remaining moves. If it is a negative change, it increases the remaining moves further and it continues. As you can see, due to this difference between planned and actual workloads, it creates a loss to the terminal. But the most significant loss is when the vessel operator is experiencing this for a long time period, it might be ended up with losing services, then shipping lines and finally shipping alliances from the terminal's perspective. We increased the train breakdowns and the model was simulated. It shows when the QCs are counted as half of the initial value, it influences planners and increase their workload. 94% of the vessel moves are altered by vessel planner while the yard planner had to alter the plan by 75%. According to the key assumptions, only the yard planner is working on the yard crane breakdowns. When 26% of the yard cranes face breakdowns, the yard plan has to alter the plan by 50%. Our model is capable of identifying the impact of mentioned factors such as causalities and feedbacks. We identified that terminal efficiency is affected by reinforcement and balancing loops in the process. One planning function can influence another planning function. Crane breakdown increase the workload of the planners and planners are balancing, the, balancing those through alterations. Findings such as loops and remaining stock supported these conclusions. In conclusion, we derived our research scope in key to yard interface to understand the dynamic behavior that relates to the planning alterations, crane breakdowns, and the planner's role. We used system dynamics to build our model. We found that there is an hourly remaining stock that was created by the feedback system that is managed by the planners and the behavior of the system was defined. One of the collaborators of my supervisor, Philip Kiesner, joins with our project from Germany with the aspects of the methodology and the publication. We presented our initial work at Australian Maritime Logistics Research Network Symposium 2020. Currently, our work is accepted at Maritime Business Review with minor changes. As for the future work, we are targeting on integration between terminal with inter-terminal transportation while focusing to integrate overall planning function within terminal planning. This is the literature table that we developed based on our literature review that includes 79 studies. Thank you very much for listening. I hope now you have a better understanding about our study. If you have any concern, this is the time to ask. Thank you again.